All right. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, Apex Loop Structures Part 2, where we are going to talk about the four, the four each, and sometimes I think the mysterious SOQL4 loop. These are the loops as a developer that you are going to use every day in your programming. Uh, it's important to understand do and do while in the first video, but you're really not going to use them that much. These are going to be the uh, significant parts of almost all of the programming that you write in Salesforce. So we're going to uh, we'll walk through and we'll code up an example of each one today. All right. So let's, uh, as always, let's open up our uh, let's open up our IDE. And we're using uh, the same class that we had before, our Apex loop structures. And let's do first, we are going to do a the, the, the classic for loop. Uh, so we're just going to do public static void for loop. Not going to pass a parameter into these just because. And so now we're going to start with, um, we're just going to say for. And if we're going to do all the same stuff that we did in the while loop, but we're going to place it all inside these parentheses. So let's create our, uh, our index, integer i, and we're going to set it equal to zero, semicolon. Then we have to have a escape condition. An ex when do we exit this loop? When i is less than, we're just going to put a random value in here, cap. And then i++. Plus plus to increment our index, curly braces, and then whatever code we place inside that for loop is going to run. So we're just going to, for this one, we're just going to do another debug log. All right, so I'm going to open up here the while loop we wrote in the first video. And so you can see, so in the while loop right out here, we create an index, something to count to give us an exit condition. We put that condition inside the while loop. And then down here, we uh, increment our index, our, our counter. We're doing the exact same stuff in our for loop here. It's just a little more compact. It's all just in one place. And most developers really prefer this. This is really the loop that you are going to write if these are the conditions that you need to set. So let's, uh, let's compile that. Run our, uh, we'll open up our anonymous apex just to test it out. Loop structures, for loop, run, run, go to our debug log, and there we can see. So that it did exactly what we wanted it to do. Uh, in this case, I hard coded a value in. That's not something typically we would really do. Like the other loops I did in the other videos, we pass an integer in here, some sort of a little more flexible thing. But this is how a for loop works. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea. Our next loop, um, let's start creating our method, is sometimes called a for each or an enhanced for loop. And what it does is it sort of iterates over a collection. So I'm going to start us off with um, this lead. I'm going to give us a list of leads to work with, just as an example. And here's something that's very easy to you could just, if you weren't aware, you can just populate your list from the constructor like this. So we're just going to say select ID and we're going to get our first name from lead. All right. Um, so instead of creating a list and then writing another SQL query to populate it, you can just do it directly like that in the, uh, in the list constructor. Now we're going to sell four. What we're going to do, so what we want to do in this case is we want to increment over all the values that are inside our collection of leads. Uh, I populated some data earlier, so there should be about 100 and I think 70 leads in that list. Um, so we're just so what, because we know that we are going to increment over a list of leads. First, we declare in our for each loop a lead. Typically, I'm just going to say for lead L colon, and then lead list that 
collection, that list that we declared up here, or that we could have passed in as a parameter. So now we are saying that lead L, it's going to equal the lead as it loops through. Let's say if we had 100 leads in there, each time it goes through, lead L is going to become the first lead in our list. The second time it loops through, lead L is going to equal the second lead in our list. So we would just get in here and we would just do whatever processing it is that we needed to do with the values in our loop. So let's, uh, we'll just to show that, we'll just do, uh, I'll tell you, we'll do system.debug. The lead in the list is, and we are each time through, lead L, that's our lead. We can use dot notation to access the fields, either the standard or the custom fields on the lead object. So we'll run that through and we should see a list of, in our debug log when we run it, we should see a, a, a big long string of leads. All right, we'll run it. So you can see, yeah, so I created, actually, this is a bad, I guess, because I forgot I created, <laughs> I created a whole bunch of leads this morning um, with, the, uh, with the name test lead. So I'd have some extra data in there. But now you can get down here, we can get to see we are now, we're, we're running through some of the, uh, the leads that come through with the normal uh, Salesforce dev or free dev org when they populate it. Uh, you know what, Look, we'll do it one more time, uh, just so you can, just so I can promise that they really are different. L.ob.id. And then we're going to, uh, we'll add a space in. We'll do uh, L.ob.first. first. Wait, there we go, compiled. Let's, uh, okay, let's run this again. So now you can see we do have different uh, ID values, right? We scroll through. So we can see it is, it is iterating through that. So let's just, once again, let's just talk through the code that we've got here, because I feel like this is a little more. So we've got to have some sort of a collection. In this case, it's a list of leads but it could have been a list of accounts. It could have been a list of custom objects. It could have been the values in a map, something you commonly use. Um, then, so we're saying we're, then we're gonna, because we have to iterate over the type of value that's in our collection. So we, in our for loop, we say lead, and then name it whatever we want. The name of the collection that we are gonna iterate over, the name of that variable, lead list, and then whatever code that we want to execute. And that is all going to run inside our for each loop. Now our last loop, and this is particularly unique to Salesforce and Apex development, is the SQL for loop. So earlier you saw in the for each loop, right, we, uh, we gave it a collection that was already populated with leads. If we write a SQL for loop, we can actually do the SQL query in the loop. And this is a technique that you're going to use a lot, especially if you need to manage heap size. Uh, so I'm gonna build this loop and then we'll talk a little bit about that. So I'm gonna do the same thing, lead L, and then I'm gonna do a query. ID from lead. Let me say where create a date equals to date. These are the uh, bunch of leads with the test name lead that I uh, populated earlier in my lead. We're going to get the first name value. And we'll get last name too, just in case we want it. Clean our Clean our query up a little bit. I like to put my conditions on separate lines typically. And then, right, we would just, whatever we're gonna do would go inside our condition. So just like we did with the for each, but now we are going to actually place the query 
in the loop and then do what we need to do to manipulate our data. So this is a really useful design if you're working with really large data volumes. If your query is returning tens of thousands of records, right? Um, because you have a heap size as one of your Salesforce governor limits. And the heap is just a place in memory where things go when they're, so first you're creating a copy of all those leads that you, in this case, all these leads, right? They are being stored in memory. And then the version that we manipulated, that we updated with, that's being stored in memory. And it can be very easy to blow through your heap size. What the soak wool loop does is provide some efficient chunking. So it, it's going to handle 200 records at a time. So let's, if we have, if we were doing a thousand records, really under the hood, uh, this would run five times. It would do the processing. If we had DML, it would do it in chunks of 200. So it's a really good way to manage heap size. A, a real world situation I can give where I uh, encountered this pretty recently was having to query Salesforce records that would then be used to generate a CSV file that could be downloaded from a Lightning Web component. So you're querying all these records and then you're taking all these fields and turning it into this massive string. Uh, if we did it with just, uh, like we saw in the for each loop, uh, very early on we uh, would hit our heap size limit. But doing a, a SQL for loop allowed us to work with all of the records that we needed to manage. So we would just do the same. So we're just going to, uh, We'll say, well, we'll just to make sure that everything ran. We'll say lead. And we'll get their ID. And you'll see when we run this, it, it's going to execute just like we saw up above. And my ID, so because my punctuation is off there, but I'm gonna wants me to capitalize that, but I'm just gonna let it go, and we're gonna run this loop. All right, back to our anonymous apex. We'll run it, see what happens. And there you go. You can see we created all the leads. And uh, you know what, just to verify, because uh, we said we wanted to get leads of where they were created today. Let's get actually lead dot created date. And we'll check that in our loop. <laughs> so there you go. There's a live coding is always messy. So that's an error you may get one time. So we'll make this a teachable moment. S object row was retrieved via SQL without querying the requested field. That means somewhere in your loop, this is usually where I have somewhere in a loop, you tried to manipulate or access data, but you didn't query it in the initial query. All right. So that is, it's a common, very common error uh, that you'll see quite a bit. So let's, uh, well, all we need to do to fix that is add create a date into our SQL query. Compile it again run fingers crossed and there we go yep so so i mean really right we would be doing more than just displaying data we would be doing some sort of manipulation update a value some sort of dml but this allows you again to just do the query in the loop and effectively manage uh heap size concerns is the big reason for using SQL for loop in my experience so there you have today we did classic for loop we talked about the for each loop and the SQL for loop. Again, hope this was valuable. Uh, let me know. Drop something in the comments if there is another video that you would like to see. Take care, everybody, and thank you.